Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today we are talking about what is an absolutely insane statistic. Yesterday, Google reported quarterly earnings, and on the analyst call, Google CEO Sundar Pichai was asked effectively about the effectiveness of AI, how much it was real, how much it was hype. And one part of his response was that he said that more than a quarter of all new code at Google is being generated by AI, then reviewed and accepted by engineers. Now, there was a lot of other stuff on this call as well. AI, for example, is helping drive revenue at Google. Google's cloud business, which includes its AI infrastructure products, was up 35% year over year to $11.4 billion. But this stat around how much Google is dogfooding AI was really the headliner. Pichai went on to say that AI for coding was, quote, boosting productivity and efficiency, and that this helps our engineers do more and move faster. I'm energized by our progress and the opportunities ahead, and we continue to be laser-focused on building great products. Of course, as Business Insider points out, as impressive as this number is, there may be some who get a little bit nervous hearing it. The new data from Pichai will surely have some employees wondering whether they're coding themselves out of a job. Company leaders have previously promised that AI isn't taking Googler's jobs yet, but the over 25% figure is striking and underscores the benefits of improving this technology. A lot of the discussion on X slash Twitter was around the implication for developers. Adit Sheth writes, If you're a programmer hesitant about using AI, and trust me, some are, it's starting to look like resisting it might mean getting left behind. Rohan Paul writes, Connecting the dots, Google laid off its entire Python team in April 2024 as part of a cost-cutting effort. Today, it's revealed on the earnings call that more than 25% of all new code at Google is generated by AI. Software engineering will be disrupted in more ways by AI than we can see right now. He also went on to make a prediction, I think that the next 10 years is the last period that any human will ever write any code. Others tried to connect it to their own industries. Lawyer Daniel Lina Jr. said, If more than 25% of new code at Google is generated by AI and then reviewed by engineers, I find it quite plausible that the same is possible in law if we do the work to build capable systems. There are differences in the ecosystems and we need to close those gaps. Diraj Nambiar writes, First, AWS and now Google are automating large amounts of their code generation with the use of Gen AI. Software engineers that don't leverage AI extensively have one, maybe two years of shelf life. Investor Steven Sanofsky made the point that ultimately, users don't really care around how products were built, they just care that they work. He wrote, in the early days of the micro, computer software was written in assembly. Then C got introduced to the micro and all the industry was asking of each vendor was, will you move to C and when? That was because C was viewed as faster and easier to use and created less bugs. It was a modern, higher level language. Soon the biggest vendors all announced that their next versions would be in C. This happened again in 1990 or so with the rise of object-oriented. Soon vendors were claiming that their products were OO and thus imbued with all the magic beans that came from that. They would be easier to maintain, have fewer bugs, easier to add new features. Nope, that wasn't true either. Then everyone began to doubt those techniques. No one cares what tools companies use to write code, not consumers or even enterprise. They care about features, cost, quality, security, reliability, privacy, and performance, to name a few. If new tools help, then great. If new tools don't help, then that's not good. It's even worse if the companies are out there touting new tools and not delivering. Still, Ravu Tanuku summed up the point of Sindar's comment, saying, This says to Wall Street we are getting leverage on AI spending. It portends what less sophisticated tech companies can accomplish over time. It implies ROI is happening and gives a reason why they should keep spending on it. I will take a minute here to get up on my bully pulpit once again and to talk about the two phases of generative AI adoption. Once again, there is inevitably going to be a phase where companies treat AI as exclusively an efficiency technology, a way to get the same output with less input a cost-saving technology that will, in many cases, lead to job cuts, lower overall costs, and the markets are likely to reward it, at least in the short term. However, the companies that win in the generative AI era, I'm quite convinced, will be those who view generative AI as an opportunity creation technology, a way, in other words, to do more with the same, or much, much more with just a little more. When it comes to developers, I am firmly on the other side of, in 10 years, we won't have any humans writing any code. Or at least I'm on the other side when it comes to humans producing code. I think that we are going to have hundreds and hundreds or thousands of times the code that we have now. I think more people are going to be producing code with the help of both assistants and agents. And I think that means more things are going to be built. But in the in-between, it's going to get weird. And even as someone who watches this every day, hearing that Google is already generating a quarter of its code with AI is fairly surprising. Two other interesting Google nuggets from the earnings call, one small and one bigger. The small one is that Google says that they won't ship agentic features until next year at the earliest. The feature known as Project Astro was previewed at the IO Developer Conference in May. It encompasses a range of functionality, including a smartphone app that can recognize the world through the camera, to AI assistants that can complete tasks autonomously. On that same earnings call, CEO Sundar Pichai said, 
Google is building out experiences where AI can see and reason about the world around you. Project Astra is a glimpse of that future. We're working to ship experiences like this as early as 2025. You might remember that The Information had previously reported that Google was planning to ship their first agents known as Jarvis as early as December, but now that timeline seems a little bit unclear. Maybe the bigger deal is that Microsoft's GitHub Copilot will now support models from Anthropic and Google alongside OpenAI. Users will be given the choice of model between Claude 3.5 Sonnet, Gemini 1.5 Pro, as well as GPT-4.0, O1 Preview, and O1 Mini. GitHub CEO Thomas Domke said, There is no one model to rule every scenario, and developers expect the agency to build with the models that work best for them. It is clear the next phase of AI code generation will not only be defined by multimodal functionality, but by multimodal choice. Microsoft, of course, introduced GitHub Copilot in 2021, making it one of the first products to demonstrate the power of AI assistance. It had previously relied solely on models provided by OpenAI. The arrival of OpenAI's O1 models led GitHub to explore the idea of a drop-down menu to provide easy access to model options. Domke said at that point, it felt like the right time to expand to other companies as well. He added, we're planning on extending that list in the future, but have no partnerships to announce at this point. GitHub has also introduced a new automated code review feature, and next up on the feature list is a powerful app designing tool called Spark. The feature will allow developers to create app prototypes based on text prompts and then refine the designs from there. Domke said, for too long, there has been an unscalable barrier of entry separating the vast majority of the world's population from building software. With Spark, we will enable over 1 billion personal computer and mobile phone users to build and share their own micro apps directly on GitHub. Now, of course, the subtext and context of this announcement is both one, what appears to be a potentially fraying relationship between Microsoft and OpenAI, and two, of course, the battle between OpenAI and Anthropic's models when it comes to code assistance. Developer Nick Dobos writes, GitHub Copilot adopting Claude and Gemini is the final nail in the coffin for base model companies. AI infrastructure is a difficult business to compete in, even if they are producing amazing technology. Application layer wins, wrappers all day, every day. Super fascinating. I don't really know how much to read into this when it comes to that open AI relationship piece. It certainly does put evidence in the column of those who think that base level models are going to be commoditized. But no matter what, it's a pretty big shift and one that'll be worth watching over time. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.